for 18 inches before moving any further. You need that screen turned on? That might be yeah, good please, for him, yeah. if you would, please. Oh, that was complicated. <laughs> yeah, we just now gone to this on this car. This one here has yet to make a loaded move. Right. So it's a Windows based yeah. operating system. Hey, just like so I said, we're just now getting into it. And uh, as it's gone, uh, we got a manometer system that's on the other crawler. And the uh, it's an old, uh, can't get parts for it anymore. And they're not repairable anymore. So what we have to do now is go back and uh, upgrade or upgrade to this system that we get. This is still years away, you know, years behind the current technology. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So what was the old system? The old called the Mono uh, Metro. Metro. Metro system, yeah. This is part of our uh, laser alignment system when we go in the VAB or we go in at the pads with an orbiter on board or empty MLP into the VAB. Mm -hmm. They get it set up based on the MLP and based on the crawler we're using. They'll set the numbers based on the high bay also. It's all three of them, every one is different. Yeah. So they'll set the counts in here. On the bell of the MLP, there's actually some laser receivers. We'll set a transmitter up in the bay. As we start in, they'll pick up that signal and they'll bring it around and you'll see in the cab when we get there, there's a red line and they'll line the lines up. And once they get lined up and we come in and come to a stop, we're normally in one eighth of an inch or less being perfectly square in the building. Once we set it down on the mounts, we're normally around a quarter of an inch. Wow. And was it uh, was there a laser system used before? Or well, before for a long time, the uh, laser was put on what, in the early 90s? Late 80s, early 90s. Somewhere along there. Prior to that, it was all done by eye. Is that right? Today, we still use the same method coming in over the, uh, at the refurb site. We mm -hmm. a, stretch a piano wire across the tops of the mounts. And their mounts are supposedly, quote unquote, supposedly level and they are straight up perpendicular, straight up and down. As we come across those mounts, the guys we got magnets we put on the pins of the uh, MLP, yep. and they will watch it as it goes down that wire, and they'll tell the cabs, give me an eighth degree left or right, or actually north, south, east, or west, depends on where we're at. And they'll give them that degree, and when he gets back online, they'll straighten it back out. And they'll follow that wire. And we come in to as, under a half an inch, square that way. But we have a plus or minus on laser, we have a plus or minus one inch, and on uh, the I, we have a plus or minus two inches. Okay. So right now we're in the process of trying to quiet this place down a lot more, doing a lot of sound attenuations mm -hmm. here. He's certified in all the aspects of the crawler operations, and uh, right now I think we have three people that are qualified on KSC to sit in that position. We're trying to get some more people uh, qualified in there. Originally, this is about what the crawler looked like. All that instrument panel? Yep. At home, I've got a picture of it. And it's the entire wall, whole setup, oh, that... all analog meters. Oh, okay. And everything you've done was analog meters. So, are the, uh, is the other one identical to this in this configuration? No, no it's pretty much, you know, if you walked in, first thing you'll see is the metros versus the touch screens. Yep. Uh, that's the first thing you'll see. The second thing you will notice is, uh, well basically that's about the only thing you will notice. So the other one's all metros? Is it? Oh, okay. Right. It just doesn't have the upgraded screens in it yet. That's mm -hmm. the next one we'll do. Probably sometime after Christmas. Right. Obviously that. may get some bells and whistles. Okay. You have to go by first. Yeah, okay. You don't get in. <laughs> I know a little bit about this place, but not too awful much. These here are basically, if I remember correctly, is basically like your um, 
gear shift. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a forward. Uh, they will give which cab they want to have control. Right. You, uh, th well, basically, this is the steering section. One of them is the um, what they call great circle. And then you got independent, and then you got crab. That's the different modes that the crawler can actually move in. Okay. Uh, normally, if going out the crawler way, we're in great circle. We go up on the ML, uh, up on the uh, refurb site, launch, uh, pad A or B, yeah. or the VAB, then we go in independent mode to where, like I was telling you earlier, these are the lasers, these are the lines, they, they line up. So each cab can do its own alignment right. for that end of the crawler. This is your steering wheel. As you can see, it's in degrees. Uh -huh. It's broken down over here into even smaller increments, one quarter degree increments. That they actually move into. Okay. Here's our speedometer. And as you can see, it's got a shows a max speed of two, but we run the thing at about nine tenths of a mile per hour. Okay. That's max speed. It will take it with a bird on it or any other time. It shakes so bad up above that. Oh, so right. So we just keep it at that. Uh, this is your actual steering angle. This is your desired. If I tell you to give me a one eighth a degree, you'll put in one eighth a degree, mm -hmm. and as it comes around, you'll watch it here to okay, go to that. Again, yep. uh, again I, I am not too sure what this one is. This tells them the over, the height. For instance, we get to the base of the pad, going up the pad, we'll go up, uh, we'll go what they call a ramp mode. Ramp mode, the crawler automatically goes into the three foot level, all the way around on level ground. As we start up the pad. It's sloped like this. Well, the MLP will stay level as we go. Right. Up. Okay. And the yeah. level off as we go in. So this is the is the brake pedal then, is it? No, that's yeah. That's actually the service <laughs> brake. This is emergency stop. I think this breaks out the uh, uh, shuts off the exciter, which uh -huh. shuts off the DC power, and it brings it pretty much to a screeching halt. This right here is the actual uh, command voltage that's being applied in the forward or reverse, depending on the direction of travel. This is your gas pedal. Oh, okay. And this is tells them that the exciter's on. If the exciter's on, they start applying current. They will get motion. Sure. And you'll get see what the disc. Uh, it's a little hard to see, okay. but you can imagine. Stand right here and look down, and you can see what the engineers see when they start the DC propel. Oh, okay. They look at those discs and watch them start turning. Uh, and do they form part of the brake mechanism? It is the brake mechanism down okay. there on it. Also, the DC uh, propel uh, generators act as brake coming down right. the hill. Okay. If there's a load on board. Okay. Let's take a couple of shots. It's warm in here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's it, just enough to keep it dehumidified. Yeah. But not enough to. Uh, So these these controls, apart from the laser docking system, would be original. Pretty much original, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. To the best of my knowledge, they're still original. I'm, t I'm putting putting together information about the the use and uh, adaptation of Apollo era mm -hmm. equipment to. Uh, well, there's a little bit of modern. blurb in there about that on that write up. Okay, that's Tells good. you about you know how it had originally been planned strictly as a uh, for Apollo only. Right. Uh, there it goes into the different methods. So you broke a, a cleat the other day. Yep. Oh, yeah, the other. on the ground. You can see it in a minute. Is that happening often? No, it's the second one I'm aware of. They used to have snow in the back, but it's only the second one. 